everybody and welcome to the Apex Weekly Wrap for August 7th, 2020. My name is Marian Simpson from Apex Media. And I'm Seth Miller from PaxX.era. Seth, last week's episode was great. I really enjoyed uh, watching it when I came back from holiday. I thought, uh, you know, you and Steph had a great chemistry together and it was so cool to see so much enthusiasm uh, from your guest, Matthew from Tapas Court. Yeah, it was a really exciting show. I think, you know, it's it's hard for me sometimes to get too excited about products I know I'm never going to fly, and we may get into that a little later in this episode as well, but it's still neat to see the developments happening, neat to see those things coming along. Um, speaking of things that are never going to fly, uh, Virgin Australia's 777s and A330s are officially retired, or they will be, assuming that the Bain Capital uh, refinancing plan for the airline is approved, which is expected uh, to happen early next month. And that's... Uh, an interesting shift. They're going to get rid of their long haul product, at least in the short term, because they don't see that part of the market uh, recovering very quickly. Yeah. So uh, we've seen some reports this week sort of detailing, um, I, I guess, or giving us more detail rather about the nature of the restructure. And it sounds like they're going to sort of trim everything back to a fleet of about 40 Boeing 737s with the aim of maybe increasing that fleet to about 60 to 80 of that same aircraft type uh, after things recover and I think a lot of this is in the name of just simplifying their operation and lowering their cost base Yeah, this is sort of like a reversion back to how it all started you go with a single fleet simple operations uh, It's gonna be mostly domestic some regional international service You'll assume trans Tasman and some of the other nearby islands and the region but overall they are really scaling back and gonna depend on partners for a lot of the uh, sort of longer haul services. Um, they're also getting rid of the Tiger Air ultra low cost carrier brand, uh, but keeping the certificate in place just in case they want to start that back up at some point in the future. Oh, okay, didn't know that. Uh, that's good to hear. And I think overall, basically what they're going for is a mid market value. The V word value has been appearing in a lot of uh, these statements. So they won't be trying to compete with uh, established carriers like Qantas for um, the premium business class travel, but they're not going to strip it back as far as Tiger Air was. Yeah, and they are keeping their two cabin configuration on the plane. So there will still be a business class seat, but you know, like we said, there's no long haul to connect it to for the over water flights. It's not going to be the flat beds anymore. It's just going to be a sort of big comfy seat up front. So interesting change. Good. Well, hopefully it all works out. They, they all sound really positive about it. Yeah. This week also saw Lufthansa take delivery of a new A320neo. And this kind of doesn't sound like news in and of itself. They've got loads of them, but they were the um, launch customer for this aircraft type. And the one that they took delivery of this week, they were tweeting about it, is the first one to come from Airbus uh, with the Zorro mask um, paint, livery painting. I don't know if it's a different type of window or if it's just uh, painting around it. Now, it is actually a different type of window that's they designed it a little differently to sort of make them easier to swap out. And there's some other sort of technical improvements that come with it, but mostly for passengers, it just looks cool. They look so cool. The, the aircraft also is going to have a couple other benefits coming on board. Uh, good news, they're going to have USB power, and they're putting uh, the overhead uh, storage. is set. There's a center ceiling compartment um, that we've seen advertised at AIX and demoed there a couple years in a row now. And basically, it moves sort of overhead slides and other emergency equipment uh, into the center aisle. Uh, which is good news. It frees up more of the bin space for passengers on the sides. Yeah, more bin space is never a bad thing to have, especially on a single aisle aircraft uh, when everybody's trying to get those wheelie, wheelie luggages on. Um, another thing that I thought was interesting about this particular Twitter thread is that uh, a lot of Lufthansa passengers were getting involved in asking questions and the airline did a really great job responding to those questions very quickly and providing more information. So for example, one uh, Twitter user asked, will we get Flynet on the NEOs? Uh, Lufthansa unfortunately did not know yet. Uh, but then another passenger said, oh, I can't really see the new cock cockpit window in the initial pictures that you've put on. So Lufthansa uploaded um, a new picture with a better view. And I thought that was really good uh, customer interaction as well. Yeah, the no Flynet thing is a little disappointing, at least to start. But eventually, we probably will see some sort of in-flight connectivity on those planes. It just remains to be seen what product. Uh, 
Also, some good news coming out of the U.S. this week. Uh, the FAA has moved forward with airworthiness directives for getting the 737 MAX back into service. And this is sort of one of the many steps along it, this long timeline, uh, considering the plane's been grounded for 18 months, roughly, at this point. Uh, but it's a critical step for pushing forward with getting the airplane back in the air. So it's some detailed stuff, you know, fixing the MCAS software, um, some angle of attack indicator things, fixing some tail wiring, which wasn't related to these problems, but it's sort of one of those, as long as we've got the planes all going in and get fixed anyways, why don't we do this too? Um, a lot of stuff going on, but it's finally happening. Awesome. Well, that's great news for Boeing and Boeing customers alike. Uh, moving along now, last week, we saw a prominent aviation design firm Priestman Good unveil a new cabin concept called Pure Skies. And this is something that they believe is going to improve hygiene, reassure travelers, and even abolish the outdated class system, uh, as well as saving airlines money. Uh, plus, it looks really cool. So here to tell us more about that is our guest this week, Nigel Good from Priestman Good. Welcome to the show, Nigel. Hi, Marion Seth. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak about our latest work. Nigel, it sounds like this product came together pretty quickly. What can you tell us about sort of the timeline of developing it and what you had to do compared to some of your previous projects? It took us about two months to generate the Pure Skies concepts, which didn't seem a long time. But when you consider our design teams are very experienced in the design of cabin interiors, we were able really to draw upon that. Um, we look at projects in the same way, whether it's this or any other. We, we look at the pain points along the way, and in this case, that's personal space and hygiene. And we use those as a catalyst to create a much better design. Great, thanks for that, Nigel. Um, you guys made use of some really interesting technologies in this cabin concept, one of them being thermochromic and photochromic inks that can display signs in the seats. Uh, can you tell us about how that works and if there's any challenges in trying to introduce technology like this into the cabin environment? One of the issues that the airlines have is reducing passenger anxiety and convincing them that the cabin interior is clean. We wanted to explore existing technologies, but ones that hadn't been used in transport interiors before. The pigments and inks that we're proposing react to UV and heat and change colour. These are great potential for signalling reassurance to passengers. Getting no ideas on board is never straightforward, but airlines come to Priestman Good for innovation, so therefore it's second nature to us. The real the secret is, is collaboration working closely with the airline suppliers and ourselves to come up with solutions that meet the certification and commercial requirements. Now, obviously, the economic outlook for airlines is challenging right now, and any sort of seat change or interiors change that's going to come along has to have some upside for the airlines in that sense. Um, what can you tell us about how ancillary revenue benefits and ancillary revenue opportunities are being built into the seating cabin design. The aim of the project was to create more spacious economy seating and also give the airline greater revenue opportunities. The seating comes in two forms, staggered and in line. The in line is a more conventional layout, but the staggered, which can be offered at premium, offers more space and more distance between your fellow traveller. We are also proposing to remove the seat back monitors. The passenger now has the opportunity to hire the monitor with full content or use their own device, whichever they prefer. And Nigel, finally, this design really suggests moving away from the traditional notions of class in the cabin uh, and moving towards zones or different sorts of areas. Uh, but obviously, such a, a major reconfiguration comes at a cost. Uh, so why do you think that this move will be beneficial to airlines? And do you think that the recent events, the current situation, the industries in today will sort of nudge them towards this change? The names economy and business class seem less relevant today. And for the Pure Skies concept, we thought that it would be appropriate to rename these zones. Regarding the cost, all the changes we are proposing will involve investment, but innovation has been one of the key drivers within the aviation industry 
and is a vital component to retain customer loyalty. It must be remembered, it takes years to develop and roll out a new cabin concept. So therefore, we're hoping that the Pure Skies concept will kickstart a new wave of innovation within the industry. Yeah, really interesting stuff there. Um, again, I think it'll be interesting to see what components of this make it into future airline cabins in the years to come. I don't think the whole thing will fly, but parts of it definitely will. So it'll be fun to watch. You know, another interesting concept uh, for flying these days is going nowhere, and which is hard to believe. But Taiwan a couple weeks ago had the idea of bringing some passengers on board and just having them get to sit on planes on the ground, which doesn't sound like my ideal world, but sure, go for it. Um, this weekend on August 8th, they're actually going a step further and Ava Air is having an, a Father's Day charter flight run out of uh, Taiwan and they're going to take an A330 up for a three hour tour. Yeah, this story I thought was really interesting when I saw it a couple weeks ago because people really like were lining up. They were desperate to go to the airport, check in, wait to board a plane and then sit on it for a few minutes and deplane. Um, and they actually had to like turn people away for this experience. They did it three times in total for this aircraft that never took off. Uh, the first one was, was an Eva Air um, aircraft. No, the first one, sorry, was a China Airlines aircraft and the following two were Ava Airway aircraft. But now we're taking it a step further. The plane is going to take off. Uh, there's going to be food and beverage service on board. It's going to be a full uh, Hello Kitty experience with Hello Kitty amenities and gifts. Um, and I think the price point is, is kind of right on for a Father's Day gift. It's, it's the equivalent of about 180 US dollars for an economy ticket. And then I think a really well-priced upgrade to 215 for a business class ticket. Yeah, that's definitely an upgrade I would take. Uh, you know, it's nifty things. Uh, Michelin three-star chef putting the meal together. It's still going to be airplane food, but it should be pretty good airplane food. Um, and the fact that it's the Hello Kitty plane and a Hello Kitty sort of discounted merchandise on board. If you're into that sort of thing, this is a great way to get it. And I think one, one thing that I really love about this is that it just shows how eager people are to fly. <laughs> You know, there's so much pent up demand that people are willing to spend money uh, to go nowhere. And I don't know if that's brilliant or if it's a bit nuts. Well, <laughs> if you want more than just a few bits of nuts, uh, come back over to the U.S. where the suppliers for the first class nuts, uh, warmed nuts in your ramekin that you get on board, uh, have a lot of supplies sitting around right now and can't come up with much to do with it. So they're actually selling them to the public. Yeah, uh, really funny article this week posted by uh, One Mile at a Time, quoting a woman named uh, Kim Peacock, who is the CEO of GNS Foods, which has been supplying these nuts to American Airlines for uh, over 30 years. And she said she's sitting on about 50,000 pounds of nuts that American Airlines and United doesn't want. Uh, she's feeling sad. And she says, we're sitting on a lot of nuts. So you can buy them online now. Um, and uh, We'll, we'll give you the, the link to do that in the uh, details down below. Yeah, you know, if you're stuck on a happy hour Zoom call or whatever it is, get your little warmed ramekin of nuts and pretend you're on board. It's almost like being in first class. You probably get a little more space, at least. And with all that nuttiness, uh, we're out of time for the weekly wrap today. Thank you so much, Seth, for joining us. Always a pleasure. And thank all you aviation nuts uh, at home for watching. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, check out paxx.aero and apex.aero uh, for more aviation news. And make sure you tune in next time. <laughs>